Hey everybody, this is Scotty with Sketches Garage, and today we're working on the old budget beater. Uh, we threw it out there for you guys to choose what motor to, to go after, small block wise, and you guys chose the 400. A uh, few guys, few of you guys uh, said I was pretty vague on the description of the motors, and uh, that was kind of intentional. I know if I would have went in and kind of told you what all each motor had, y'all probably would have went with the 360, and uh... It would be a good choice for a different car, but not for this car. But on paper, it definitely looks way better than this motor sitting here. But for the combination that we got and the car that we got, this, this motor will be far superior for us. So I'm kind of sorry about that, but I was really just kind of want to reach the goal this year. And we only got this weekend to race and then maybe two more and then we're pretty much well be done for the year so that's why I was pretty vague on on that I will tell you this motor right here it's a, a 406 it's got a 5.7 scat rod in it I believe a stock crank just a flat top piston it's got some aftermarket cheap aluminum heads a 202 head it's got roller rockers and stuff on it and a medium size solid lift cam in it and then uh, price-wise, we got $1,800 in the motor from oil pan, the carburetor. So that's, that's not too bad, being it's got some pretty decent add-ons, like a good starter. It's got a good water pump. Just a little nickel and dime stuff that makes a little bit of a difference. Um, making this video just to show you guys a few things to take a look at before putting a, a motor, a new motor in your car. I know a lot of times you're real excited and you just want to jam it in there as fast as you can. You can overlook some little little things. So I'm going to show you a couple little things to take a look at before you just throw it in there. Save you a lot of headache and maybe save you from having to pull it back out to do something. The first thing you want to do is make sure you got dowel pins in both sides. This motor actually was missing this dowel pin, so I had to put it in earlier. The next thing you want to take a look at is your converter. Make sure your converter bolt hole size and the size on your flywheel are the same. Once you start messing with aftermarket stuff, uh, sometimes this is a 3 8 hole and you can have up to a half inch hole over here. If you take and uh, put that together and then go to bolt it together, you're going to have some slop, so you want to make sure you make them both the same size. You want to go ahead and check your bow, bell housing. Make sure around the dowel pin area isn't wore out and got an excess of slop. That'll give you a lot of problems. I like to go ahead and put a bolt in all the header header area. Just make sure they're not boogered up. Run them in and out a little bit on both sides. And being we're putting a small block in this car for the first time, uh, the headers that we're going to use, I like to take and we'll lift the motor up, put the headers on it before we put it into the car. Because a lot of times you run into problems with the spark plugs hitting the back of the head or a clearance problem like this right here might hit the header. Just little stuff like that if, to where if it was in the car, it could be a pain and it would be a lot easier just to address now. So we're going to go ahead and get started on this unit, and I'll catch up with y'all in a bit. One other thing I forgot to mention, always uh, make sure to change your front seal. It's a lot easier to do it now. Uh, you can risk it, but for three, four bucks, it's not worth it. Because it's not changing it now, it's changing it when it's back in the car.
whenever bolting the training motor and training together, I always like to take and run the bolt in a little bit. And then see if you can spin the converter. At no time should the converter ever lock up. If you uh if the converter gets into a bind, either your converter mid plate motor combo is not right or you don't have the converter far enough back in the pump. If you was just to crank it down, it's just gonna break the pump and you'll be out. Have to pull the training back out and get it rebuilt. So I like to just pull it down just to fuzz. Pull it a little bit tighter. Just kind of watch, watch the gap in between the, the block and the bell housing. And spin the converter until you got that. The bell housing bolts tight. So you can spin the converter as free as can be. If you don't have one of these little ratchets, get yourself one. Because they are definitely very handy. These old motor mounts are notorious for pulling apart, so uh, a fix, old timey fix is just to take and drill a hole through them and put a nut and bolt through them and then you just got to grind down the heads a little bit and that'll keep it from being able to, to tear apart. You normally only do it on the driver's side, you can do it both sides if you want to, but normally the, the driver's side is the one that takes all the pressure. So throw a couple bolts in there and you got Something that'll get you get you by. Like I said, you can uh, have all sorts of things interfere with it. You got head studs in the motor sometimes, they'll come up a little bit too high and hit the header flange or something silly like that. And if you got it in the car and you're trying to, trying to fight it, it's just a pain. Whereas if you catch it out here, you know, you set it on there, it doesn't work out, clearance the header a little bit, set it back on there. It's real easy to do, basically. made it a lot easier if you got a buddy to help you, but sometimes that's not always the case. So sometimes you just got to do what you got to do.
You guys might have noticed that I got it rigged to where the back is leaning down quite a bit. It's uh, I rigged it like that because I knew I was going to be doing it by myself. And it's hard. Uh, you could get it, lift it where it was level, and then push it down if you got a couple people, but it had been real hard for me to do that. So I just rigged it to where the back end is down. I'll be able to put it down in there and just kind of crash it into the firewall and hopefully get it slid up and under and then take the jack and jack it back up and get it to sit on the motor mount. It's not the ideal way, but it's the way we're going to do it. See, if I had a pretty painted car, I'd be sweating that right there. That's just character. Didn't even scratch my rust. Alright guys, I'm running into a little bit of a clearance issue. You guys see how the the oil pan is hitting the frame down there? Here we go. Got the oil pans hitting the frame down there. And we're already hitting the back, the, the top of the transmission tunnel. So I can't jack the back of it up to let it swing in. So I'm going to just take this ratchet strap and hopefully I can get it to slide back far enough to where it falls down off the frame. And then we can back jack the back of the motor up and be good. Let's see what happens.
Alright guys, that looks like that worked. Hey everybody, been working on this thing, just about got it wrapped up and uh, found one little problem, the fitting that the temperature sensor goes into was broken off. So what I'm going to try to do is just take this right here and tap that because it looks like someone's epoxied it in this uh, intake so I'm saying it was probably leaking before. So I'm going to just try to take and tap that and screw this in there and see if that will work out for us. So far everything's been a pretty smooth process except for I got to the header part and I could have swore I had a couple sets of Chevelle headers and I looked and looked, tried a bunch of different pairs and then I finally decided okay I'll just go get some shorty headers. I knew I had a set of those that I always use for mock up. And uh, when I went to get them, I happened to see one more set of headers sitting on a shelf over yonder. So gave them a shot and they fell right in. Hoping this motor works out. Good, feels like the tap, the tap took. I'll probably do uh, the same thing. I'll probably just JB weld that in. Hopefully it won't leak. Get as much of these brass shavings out as possible. Don't want to plug up my high dollar aluminum radiator. Let's see if this 
screws down. Thing screws in, no bubbles, no troubles. See, I think I'm going to mix a little bit of epoxy and put on it and tighten her down, see what happens. Okay guys, whenever you use a JB Weld, the most important thing to do is always grab your best screwdriver to use it to apply it, and then forget about it, and then ruin your best screwdriver. Yep, I think we'll guarantee that until it leaks. Alright guys, we'll catch up with you in a little bit. Hey everybody, it's the next morning. Uh, got this thing pretty much well wrapped up last night. It was just 11.30 or so and I didn't want to start it up and wake up the neighbors. So I'm going to try to start it up now, see if it'll run for us. If it does, we'll change the back tires and we'll go racing. See if we got a hot rod or not. Let's see if this thing's going to start. Right, guys we're gonna try to make a pass it's been a long day a lot of stuff's been fighting me I'm not really even gonna get into it I'm just gonna say we fix it right there give her a shot see what happens we got the small block in it hopefully she'll do some work for us got us some slicks Alright guys, get some job on the 